Hello friends and enemies. Welcome to or back to Happy For Now. It's me Isabel here with a really fun video. I saw Brie over at Four Paws in a Books to do this and I was like oh, I have to do this video. I have to do this video because I think it's such an interesting one because there's a lot of these I don't agree with and I could do that video as well and that is books with a 4.0 or higher on Goodreads that I agree with and that is as of filming this video. They could have shifted some but generally speaking I feel like once a book gets into that 4 or higher rating average like it just doesn't come down. So I am pumped for this and I'm going to give you like really brief chill summaries for each of these. It's not going to be too in-depth because I have, a, I have a handful of books here for you. Some are romance, some are not, but yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. I think this is such a fun concept. So let's dive right in with our romance titles, of course, because that's primarily what I love to talk about. First up, we have Twisted Games by Anna Wong. This is the Princess Diaries 2 romance book of my dreams. This is a bodyguard romance and it follows a princess and her bodyguard and he just he does so much for her and I love all the things he does for her and the ways he shows that he cares but then it's like no no no, I don't actually have feelings gross what are feelings and that for me in this book was fantastic I think it was the perfect mix the author says it's Princess Diaries 2 inspired you can see it in the book in the best ways like in positive ways right like I just think it's really really good uh it also just for me incorporates the magic of a princess story in a way that I just wasn't necessarily expecting when it came to this book. But Anna Wong for me is definitely a favorite author, so I was very happy to see this as highly rated as it was. Next we have Part of Your World, which I have, it's up there, you can't see it, never mind. I was like, it's up there, I have a special edition of it. But Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez was the book that got me to read Abby Jimenez. I really had no interest in some of her older titles that have come out that I'd seen people talk about, like, part of, uh, not Party of the World, like, The Friend Zone and stuff. Like, I just, like, that's not for me. Not my interest, right? Part of Your World surprised me. One, we got an older woman, younger man romance, which is not, again, super typical thing we get. Uh, especially traditionally published. I feel like it's not as common as I wish it was sometimes. But this one surprised me because it was very, very hyped, and I was terrified going in. And I left that book just like it was a warm hug of a book. It is about our heroine finding herself and her identity outside of her fam familial expectations. A hero doing the same and trying to save this family B&B that he loves and also pursue his passion of carpentry and run and be the mayor of this town and all these things. This had like all the things I love about a small town romance sometimes and also the like part of your world thing being like they want to be part of each other's world. Um, the light, very light. Little Mermaid ish stuff where, like, she really wants to be part of his world. Um, and it just was so fun and so cute. And I really enjoyed the way the romance developed here and worked for the both of them and how that ended up being, which is like why I was so happy to see it at a 4.0 on Goodreads and high or higher, whatever it was at. Either way, I was very happy to see that because I do think it's a book well worth the hype and a book that just at the end of the day really surprised me. Then we have Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, a book I didn't love, but a book that I agree with the rating of because for me, for me, it was not romancy enough, okay? It wasn't romancy enough, but I understand why people love it. It is really well written. There's chronic migraine rep. There are, there are nods in here to romance books and to classic romance stuff and things that show me this, this author loves romance. But for me, at the end of the day, this book just lacked in the delivery of the romance between these two couple, the, the couple. And even though it lacked in that, I still agree with the fact that it has a high rating. And I agree with the fact because I know that it's a romance book that, that a romance-ish book that appeals to a lot of people because it does read a lot more literary. And listen, I know there's one thing people love and it's books that read literary but are kind of romance. Next up, we have The Very Irregular Society of Witches by Sangu Mandu. I hope I said that right. I struggle every time. Every time I struggle. This is one that I think, again, I'm surprised to see it here because I do feel like it's a book that a lot of people would not like because I think it's almost too rom romancy for some of the cozy fantasy category it gets lumped into. But I agree with it because this was just such a fun book. It was like a warm little hug, a little treat, a little adventure, and it was everything it promised to be from the summary, from the cover, everything delivered in this book. So I, th I think because of the fact that everything delivered, it really made sense to me that it is rated as highly as it is. And then last but not least, another one that is in that literary fictiony romance category, The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. 
100% deserves to be here. This is such an interesting time slip novel, something we don't get a lot of anymore. Time slip used to be a little more common, but I still don't think it's like the most common. So our heroine is living in her aunt's who has now passed apartment content note for suicide on this book and grief themes. And she's living in this apartment and magically is transported seven years back to this man who also is living in the apartment and they're there together. And it is seven years in the past for him in real time when she meets him finally. But it's just yesterday to her. And that is such an interesting gap to bridge for a romance in my opinion. And something interesting that you have to figure out how that works for you as, as a people because to, to one of you it was yesterday and to the other one it was seven years ago and you just vanished. Like that's such a hard thing to navigate. So she works in publishing of course like Ashley loves our publishing uh heroines <laughs> and I think it's really fun to read but he she works in publishing he's a chef and we follow them kind of navigating a lot of these things and the reveal of when they meet is fantastic and nerve-wracking at the same time I don't know this is one of those books that I, I just I see and I understand the appeal because I too really really loved my time with this book all right and then we have my four not romance titles that I agree with having a 4.0 or higher on Goodreads. And that is first up Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. Oh my goodness, this is such a fantastic YA thriller. This follows a girl who plays hockey and there are deaths and things happening around her t village in northern Michigan, I think. And it follows her finding out what's going on really and helping solve the case. And it is so good. It is a powerful book. It is very impactful but it also is a fun time. Uh, you do need to check content notes here. She's already fighting against the patriarchy in ways because of the fact that she likes to play hockey and as a girl. But I just thought this was so good. It was so engaging. It's so interesting to read. I really need to read the next book by Angeline Bully like sooner than later and hopefully we'll be doing that very soon. But yeah, I, I immediate fan, immediate fan and we'll read everything this woman writes now. 100% sign me up. <laughs> Then we have All Systems Read by Martha Wells. This is the infamous Murderbot series. I feel like I haven't met a person who read Murderbot and didn't enjoy it. So not surprised that this is beloved, but also thrilled that it is this well rated because it is such a weird book. This is a sci-fi book where we follow Murderbot, a robot who does murders, but doesn't want to do it. Like they just want to chill in their pot all day and watch Netflix. Valid, my dude, like valid, I feel this. We are getting an adaptation of Murderbot uh, on Apple TV at some point, so I'm really excited to see how that goes. And then we also have graphic audios of this series, so like I'm working on listening through those, but I I think Murderbot does something really, really well and different in sci-fi than we're used to seeing. Like I had never read anything like this before and I'm just thrilled it exists, so it's a good time. Then we have An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This really surprised me. This is one of those books that really surprised me. I listened to it in a little road trip and like could not stop. Like I could not put this book down. This kind of follows what happens if weird statue robot things showed up on earth and how social media and all these things would be impacted and what the reaction would be. So it has a sci-fi element. It has this kind of real world element to it because I do feel like some of what happens is what would have happened <laughs> would happen in real time here if that's if this was a thing right and I just thought it was a really engaging read so I'm not surprised it's well reviewed and it's something that I've thought about revisiting in the past so it's something I may reread sooner than later here but this one I agree with because like I said I think it does something really interesting and different that I haven't really read before and then last but not least we have a psalm for the wild built this is by becky chambers who's also a beloved sci-fi author this is a fantasy sci-fi thing this is a robot and a monk and the monk makes tea and explores with this robot and it's this really quiet journey um it really investigates a lot of things around beliefs and what what we find to be true and not true at times and i think it's a really poignant story in a weird way. It's really touching. I really enjoyed my time with it. I think it's one of those books that like it's tiny so it's like a really accessible sci-fi fantasy situation. I think it's sci-fi. I don't know what category this goes in y'all. But yeah it's a really accessible read because it is so short and I'm not surprised that it is rated well because I do feel like it has so much to it in such a short span of time. So yeah those are all of my books for this one. Let me know what you agree with on Goodreads that has a 4.0 or higher because I would love to know. And if you don't want to do that, you can leave me a star emoji in the comments. 
I'll link to all these books for you down below. Links to my friend anywhere on the internet. And I will talk to you all in just a few days. Bye. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be. Life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we